please excuse me for speaking English. Expressing bitch on bitch on me and need support. So, if you can bear with me, um, my journey in Aikido. I'd like to thank you all. Thank you so much for welcoming you, me to your dojo and uh, for opening your doors and your minds to what I have to offer. I would like to share with you my explorations in Aikido. I've been practicing Aikido for about 30 years now, and I found out this year that I actually started my Aikido training on Osensei's 100th birthday. So, here I am. I have a joint lineage. My first teachers were uh, students of Saotome Sensei uh, for about six or seven years. And then um, my teacher after that was a Tohei student, Kuichi Tohei, and, uh, something akin to Key Society, but through another teacher named Roderick Kobayashi in Los Angeles. Um, uh, the first lineage that I had was a little more martial than the Key Society, than Tohei's lineage. So I had a little bit of both sides, a little bit of the harder style, a little bit of the softer style. And um, my own journey took a big turn when I found, uh, when I was working with a beginner one day. And if you've ever worked with beginners, you know how difficult it can be to get them to give you a, a committed attack, enough energy to do Aikido. Because there's something in us, this a defense mechanism, that keeps us from doing dangerous things. And so there's an intuitive understanding that when we attack someone, we put ourselves in danger. And the, this was compounded in this particular student because he was a trained boxer. So he had a sense of when he committed to an attack, he was making himself vulnerable. So I really couldn't get him to do enough, give me enough energy to actually show him what I wanted to show him, which was through a wrist grab. So finally I said to him, please, I, I just, I need you to really attack me. You really have to attack me. Just trust me on this. You need to attack. And he said, okay. And he came in this direction. <laughs> okay. So, we had a surprise because I was expecting a wrist grab. But when he grabbed my throat, I went into the five or six or ten techniques that I had been practicing for years and years and years to deal with the throat grab and nothing worked. And, you know, I wasn't defenseless. There were plenty of open targets that, from my martial experience, I knew I could take advantage of. But I knew anything that I did wasn't going to be Aikido, and it wasn't going to be nonviolent. So I had to step back after 18 years and say, what am I doing wrong? What am I missing here? Because Osensei, with his breadth of experience, would never, in my feeling, have set something up for me to be a sitting duck, what we would say in English in America is a sitting duck, someone who's just a target, who's got nothing there. And um, so I took a step back and I started looking at the words of us and say, and over and over and over he said, this is a spiritual art, it's not a martial art, it's Budo is love, and all these confusing things that we kind of, I tended in that time to think, oh, that's beautiful, beautiful thought. Now I'll throw my partner. Now I'll learn how to defend myself. Um, so I had to rethink the idea of spirituality in regards to this art form. And I reasoned that if Aikido is a spiritual art, there must be something spiritual about the nature of attacking. So what is it about an attack that is spiritual? And this led me to go back to my science background and my, uh, my spiritual orientation to look at the nature of the energy that flows through us. And the energy that flows through us kind of is like energy that goes into a car when you're idling. You know, as we sleep, as we live, as we sit, this energy is always moving through us. But when we intend to do something, we intend an action or intend you know, it projects out of us, and that intention creates our act action. So in, in thinking about the way love feels, which is synonymous with ki and, and the spiritual essence of us, when we love, we feel very open. 
and this kind of flows out of us. And when we feel unconditionally loving, we feel it moving out in all directions. We embrace everything. Everything becomes part of our experience. And then I saw that if there were, I could be unconditionally loving, but as soon as I saw something that I didn't really love too much, I intellectually, I would put up a barrier to that and not send my love to that. And if there was a political party that I didn't like, well, I didn't love them either. And my neighbor who keeps me up at night pounding on the drums, I don't like that either. So I started to feel that what we do when we don't love is actually put up barriers to that presence, that, that energy moving from us. And I started to see that if people don't love at all, or if they love very little, that that connected nature of key, because when we love, we connect to things. That connected nature starts coming out in forceful ways. It's, uh, you know, we, we were talking about Hans Brinker and the putting the finger in the dike. There's so much pressure behind that that the water is shooting out like a jet. You know, and it becomes destructive. The, when it, when it, and when we know from uh, people who work in karate and, and places where they focus a lot of energy and break bricks and boards and things like that, that focusing that energy, that energy is being constricted into a really tiny point, focusing it like a light, like a laser, and it becomes destructive. So, but even though it's destructive in this form, I felt that this was actually an expression of love. It was an express need to connect that was being made into something else. So then I started to reason, well, if that's the case, then maybe Osensei was being literal when he said that this is love and that the expression of this love is actually is fulfilling this need in this person. And so I started experimenting with that a bit. And little by little, um, I came to the place where I am now. And that's kind of like what I would like to share with you. So Roman's been working me, with me for a while, and, and, um, and you know, I've known a lot of teachers who could do a lot of stuff and their students can't do it. For me, that's not enough. I want my students to be able to do this. And I am relentless with my students. I don't let them get away with anything because it doesn't do them any good and it doesn't do me any good, right? It doesn't do me any good to have me create students who don't know what I really want to teach them nor does it do him any good to think that he can throw me no matter what. So I give him a real good attack here so that he can feel decentered and unbalanced. And I'll change it up. I, I don't take advantage of these things to do all that stuff because we're going to practice on this basic level here. But he can feel that he's under duress and that I'm not going to let him go. Now, I'm not going to stop him from doing Aikido. I'm just going to maintain this pressure to his center. Now, see, he, he can feel himself stiffening, and what that does is just charge me up to send more energy into his center to keep the spear energy up. <laughs> so from here, I can now start to coach him a little bit, because I can feel that he's debalanced and his limbic system's going crazy, right? It's like alarm bells are going off in the basement. Okay, I say, hey, Roman, what do you got for me? Don't you have something there? So as soon as he can shift from, and, and go ahead and throw me over, keep me off balance here. Okay, you can see that I'm off balance. I'm not going to fake this. He's got me. He's being nice at this point because we've gotten to a point where I'm at a disadvantage. And he can feel when I start to manipulate or try to use Aikido. I can use vectors, right? I can find ways of you know, getting loose, but he feels that as the struggle that it is. And we're not after that. I want him to feel, and I want myself to feel when I'm in his position, this kind of other thing. Did you feel me shift anything physically? No. Okay. And it's a very important thing that he can feel that I'm not manipulating him in any way. I'm merely changing the way I see him. And then our bodies move together. If I try to do that physically, that, he can march me around them that easily. But as soon as I shift, I believe that the field becomes this big 
kind of silk air bag of key. That's the kind of way I see it. I see it. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. Okay. So I was going to ask you uh, when someone is holding your arm like this, it really hurts. Yes. How do you change your focus from, oh, it hurts, to, oh, this is my old friend, I love him? Okay. Uh, because you, your attention goes uh, automatically yes. to this uh, where it hurts. That's when it gets the hardest. So I don't recommend this too much for beginners. Go ahead and put it on. Uh, okay, go ahead and keep it on. Level on. Okay. So he's going to bring it to the point where he's just at the crux of pain. I'm getting limbic system, you know, alarm bells are going off now saying your wrist is in danger because he's actually twisting it. He's just not making me go down. Now he's even more on there. Okay, so now it's even more of a challenge. But what I have to do is I have to treat this like, okay, I get it, the house is on fire, but there's something more important than saving my arm. I have to, you know, get rid of the fire. And the fire in this case is his need to connect, his need for love. Would you, uh, I think the camera's on, but do you mind being on camera? No. Would you like to put a Sankyo on and see how it feels? Because oh. okay. we've tried it before. Right? Okay. It's fun, but it's fun. So go ahead and make, there you go, guys. So you see how he's connected to my center, and he's lifted my center up. This works, is because most people resist it. Ah, ah, right? Or else they collapse, they withdraw. Okay? But there's an alternative. The alternative is to send this energy your way along the way your energy is coming into my system. To, in order for you to do Sankhya this way, what I have to do is I have to constrict my key flow right into his central core. Okay, feel it? Yep. Okay, so let me get it a little, I haven't done this in a while, because I don't like doing this, but feel it into your central core? Yep. Okay, so can you get out of this? In, in uh, the new way, Any way you want. Okay, that's right. But be careful because if you go against your wrist, it's yeah. in a very dangerous position. Yeah. Okay. And what usually happens, let's go around this way. What usually happens is we either give this up and then I get stuck, right? Yeah. Or we try to turn that and then it starts putting pressure on our wrist. Yeah, I can feel it. Right. So here's what I was feeling from you is this kind of stuff. But what I want to feel is this. Now the way I get there, this, this circumstance, is remember a, a few of you I grabbed and I said, do you realize I'm falling down right now? So he can get me off balance. Go ahead. Yeah. If I can be off balance, but if I trust that my own system will find its balance, I worry about his balance. He's falling down. So I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of you. Oh my gosh, you're falling down. <laughs> he doesn't realize it. But it's a different kind of experience, right? Yeah. Do you feel any struggle there? No, it's nothing to... You've got it. It's you're not, I'm fight. not taking this... You, you've got the Sankhya, right? Yeah. I'm not removing it, right? You're not letting the Sankhya go, are you? No. Right. And you can see my hand is still this way. Right? If he starts to come into my center with it, it just makes it a little bit more dynamic, yeah, that's all. Easy. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, when we do this, I'm not going to offer my arm this way to an attacker and say, hey, let me show you how Aikido works. <laughs> well, you can just do it. Just to, uh, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> right. well, we work this way so that we can find those parts in us that still are caught up so that we can find a way to transcend those things. Would you like to try Nico? Uh, yes. Okay. Good. Okay, he's got it, right? Stay with it. Yeah. Okay. okay, so he's out of balance. And he's got all this energy being centered right into my center in order to get me to go this way, right? To put this pressure on my wrist. But if I understand that, and I just... Yeah. I, I don't have to... It's the resistance to this that gives it its power. It's the resistance to this. My limbic system saying, don't, oh, your wrist is breaking, your wrist is breaking. It sends me to my knees and, and stiffens all this up. But in reality, see all this stuff going right in here? That's actually coming from right here. 
that flow goes both ways, especially when it meets this expanding flow. See, this is a constricted flow. That's a constricted flow. Maybe you can put it on the other part. That's a constricted flow. So when it becomes this voluminous flow, along the same channel that he's dug, it's a whole different feeling. Yes. Right? So this time, go ahead and put the ego on. I'll just go with it. But I'm still, I'm still kind of letting it do it, right? We're still letting it, but we're building up a dynamic. So feel how all the energy is going this way? I'm not going to go like this. I'm not going to move in alignment with it because he takes advantage of that. It's like a withdrawal key. I'm actually going to fill his system up with it. Does that make sense? Yes. Can you felt it? Yeah, it's a big difference. 